this TV program's boring, Delphi. Change the channel. Ah, uh, I told you that set has been broke for weeks. <laughs> Let's play bingo. Mm -hmm. Ain't nobody here to call numbers. How's your part in me? This, my dear, was the highlight of my day. <laughs> well, here. Pass the time on reading this. That speaker left it last week. The myths of reincarnation. I slept through that talk. What exactly is reincarnation anyways? Well, it's when you die and you come back as something completely different. So I could come back as a pig? Oh, you ain't listening, are you? Well, we got some mail. That's probably a bill. No, no, it says right on the envelope. This ain't a bill. <laughs> well, in that case, let me see it. This was the envelope. This is the bell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they sure got you there, Phil. Bag <laughs> never. Oh, Phil, lighten up. It is almost Christmas. Why don't you take a nap? I ain't sleepy. Ah, uh, but if you close your eyes long enough, he'll drift right off. Here we are. This is what they call the commentary. <laughs> you got the common part right. <laughs> it's a nursing home, Mimi. Not the Taj Mahal. In other words, it's their recreational area. Look how cute. They're holding hands. Margaret, come sit down beside me, Margaret. Oh, he's calling out her name, even in his sleep. <laughs> you look pretty in that dress, Margaret. <laughs> well, why don't we talk over here so we don't disturb them? I thought Grandma Taylor was supposed to be meeting us here. We're a little early. How am I supposed to get my journal done writing out here? Since when do you keep a journal? It was my therapist's idea. She said it would be a step towards curing my, how did she put it? Unending selfish tendencies. But I keep telling her I'm not selfish. Mine! What was I saying? <laughs> well, there should be plenty of people you can help out here. I know, but writing in a journal takes so much effort. Well, you know, M Mimi, people pay money for published diaries. What do you mean? I mean, if it's interesting enough, you could sell it and make some money. Really? Wait a minute. When the purpose of writing the journal was to help other people, you weren't interested, mm -hmm. but now that you think you can make money off of it, you're all in? Bingo! What? Who got bingo? I want to play. <laughs> we ain't playing bingo. We've got company. We're sorry. We didn't mean to wake you. Oh, no. Howdy, young people. Welcome to Prune Valley Nursing Home. My name is Delphia. This is my ball and chain. His name is Phil. Want some potted meat? Uh, no, thank you. Good, because I ate it all. <laughs> well, I'm Oswald. This here, hey guys, this is Pete, Petunia, and Mimi. Everybody, this is Phil and Delphia. <laughs> Phil and Delphia? Oh, that's priceless. <laughs> Pete, why are you being so rude? Well, come on. His name is Phil and her name is Delphia? I mean, what are the chances? Philadelphia, come on. <laughs> hey, why don't you go have a seat and uh, try to compose what? yourself? <laughs> okay, fine. You'll have to excuse my brother. He doesn't get out very much. Oh, we understand. When you live in a nursing home, you don't get to do much traveling. Mostly we sleep. Oh, it was so cute when you were sleeping. You were talking in your sleep. Margaret, come sit beside me. Margaret looks so beautiful in that dress. Uh -oh. Now that's true love. Uh, Petunia? Mm -hmm. oh, what? His wife's name is Delphia. <laughs> Uh -oh. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Can you forgive me? <laughs> don't you have a, I can do? Once you have a seat by Pete, uh, don't talk. Thank you. Is there something I can do for you so I can write about in my journal? Oh, I got it. Here. Let me see. Well, the next time you stick a needle in me, I'm going to deck your halls. Oh, dear. What you all looking at? Ain't you heard of the tape we saw a woman before? Law have mercy, it's Ida May. Come on, Phil, she's in one of her moods. I'm right behind you. I'm warning you, Ida May. I done learned me some judo. Get out of my way or I'll knock a knife in your head and dare to ride. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Nurse, hurry up and get in here. I think it's time. Are you all right? Uh, is there something we can do? 
Maybe you should put your head between your knees. This is it! I can see the light! Uh, I'm gonna get the nurse. Is there something I can do for you so I can write about it in my journal? Swing open the pearly gate, St. Peter! I'm a coming in! Oswald! Oh, well, what? I'm not a doctor. She's right here. I think she's on her way out. Oh, thank goodness you're here. Oh, oh it's you. Why couldn't they find a real nurse? Hi, Meg Crandall. Why are you worrying these nice people? I need my pain pill. My back's killing me. It ain't time for your pill, so just sit down. Where you been anyway? Well, I was tending to some of the other residents, Ida May. Well, if you take care of them the way you take care of me, they're probably dead. Oh, bless <laughs> her heart. She's so contrary. If you throwed her in the river, she'd float upstream. <laughs> what a nasty, conniving, underhanded thing to do. You're my kind of woman. Here, have some grapes. What? Ida May, do you want these nice city folks to think that we don't take care of you? Now you behave yourself while I go check out Miss Maude across the hall. Well, if you take care of her the way you take care of me. She's probably dead. Yeah, yeah. I need them pills, you know. Uh, yeah, we're sure you do. You have. Well, here y'all are. Good to see you again. Oh, howdy. Yeah. Oh, howdy. Oh, howdy. Oh, howdy. Oswald gets the royal treatment and I get old howdy. Brenda May, Glenda May, y'all act like somebody. Glenda May, Glenda May. Yo, Glenda May. Yo, yo, look. Dear General, I just gave the hillbilly the light. <laughs> Grandma, are you okay? Well, I tell you, I'm wearing a new girdle and it's killing me. The price that we women pay to stay beautiful. I know it. Cousin Oswald, you know what I do that night? I rub hog lard all over my face. And it makes her look so pretty. Well, thank you, Glenda May. Until she wipes it off. Hey! <laughs> Grandma Taylor, what's this little meeting about? You've gotten us curious. Well, you see, it has to do with money. Money? Hold on, journal. Okay, I want it on this. Grandma, I don't think I've ever seen you this serious before. Uh, howdy, Anna May. How are you? I'm dying for pain. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. Now, the reason I asked all y'all up here was, uh, Anna May, could you excuse us, please? This is family business. Fine! I know what I'm not wanted. I'll just go die in the next room! Yes! <laughs> Grandma Taylor, you said this had to do with money? As in your money? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know how me and my family inherited all that money from our dear late Uncle Zeke all them years ago. Uh, yes, ma'am. Diamond mines. In the oil fields? In coal mines. Right, and all them <laughs> there things is worth millions, millions, which makes me loaded. Oh, sorry. Uh, well, I was going to say a blessed woman, but what good is being loaded, as you call it, if you can't share the money with the folks that you love the most? Excuse me, Aunt Jean. I'm sorry to interrupt your meeting and all, but I need to talk to you about Sadie. Oh, Sadie, is she okay? Yeah. Oh, I'll be. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'll be right back. If this girdle don't kill me first. <laughs> Oswald, did you hear that? I think it's finally about to happen. Could it be we're finally going to get some of that inheritance money? <laughs> well, maybe. I think so. <laughs> what are you guys whispering about over here? You don't have to pretend anymore, Glenda May. Nope. We figured out the secret. Mm -hmm. yep. You did? Drax, I wanted to be the one to tell you. So that it's true. I'm getting hitched. Huh? What? So what? I'm getting hitched up with the feller. What? what? That's your secret? Uh -oh. Uh oh, who are you marrying? Elmer Crick. He's from the southern end of the county. Well, what does not, that mean? They're not too smart down there. 
<laughs> okay. What, where'd you guys meet? We met in the personal ads of Frog Gideon Magazine. Yeah. Glenda <laughs> May! Uh, you remember how I painted my truck camouflage? Yeah, Elmer. Oh, I can't find it. <laughs> what am I gonna do? Oh, Elmer, go stand in the shade. I'll be right there. Okay. You know, if dirt was dumb, he'd be about ten acres. <laughs> Maybe we should, Maybe we should go, go check on him. Nah, don't do that. He'll be back. Well, how do you know? Because he just walked in the closet. Told <laughs> <laughs> you. to me. Okay. Everybody, this is a real good friend of mine, a dear friend, Sadie. Sadie, this is Petunia and Pete and Oswald and Moo Moo. Mimi. It's very nice to meet you, Miss Sadie. <laughs> Sadie's lived here for three years now. They said I could go home tomorrow. Oh, you're going home? That's great. Well, now don't forget, hon, this is your home. No, that man said he's coming to pick me up and take me back home. Okay, well, whatever you say, hon, let's get you over here and sit you down and get you some rest. And girls. Thank you. <laughs> Bless her heart, she's entering the last stages of Alzheimer's disease. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Does she have any family? Well, yeah, her husband's still alive and he uh, comes to visit her every day just like clockwork. They had one boy and he went in the military, but... Sadly, he was killed in combat years ago. Well, why can't Miss Sadie live at home then? Well, because of her health problems. Her husband just ain't able to take care of her the way she needs it. She's precious. Oh, the most precious soul the good Lord ever put on the face of this earth. And that, my dear Sadie Slickers, is why I asked y'all to come out here. I need some help going about you know, uh, with knowing how to go about getting Miss Sadie out of here. Once and for all. Wait, you're wanting to move her out of the nursing home? Right, and I'm going to need a lot of money to build a nice little cottage next to my house. And uh, then, you know, I'm going to need to hire a nurse 24-7 for her care. And then I can keep my eyes on her for good. Well, of course we'll help you. And you certainly have plenty of money to do all of that. Well, yeah, uh, I, I just have this one little problem. It just seems like when I'm talking to her husband about it, he just is not keen on this idea at all. I wonder why. Oh, I don't know. All I know is he is real, real protective of Miss Sadie. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry. Everything to God in prayer. That's her favorite song. It's getting dark outside. Has anybody seen my baby? Miss Dave, your baby is in your room safe and sound. But he might be crying. I need to take him home. Well, I tell you what, we'll go check on your baby. And then it'll uh, probably be about time for your sweetheart to come. My sweetheart's coming. That's wonderful, Miss Sadie. Do y'all want to come and see my baby? Sure. Well, of course they do, don't y'all? Come on, everybody. We're going to go check on Miss Sadie's little baby. <laughs> Dear Journal, I just met the sweetest lady. She's, she's just wonderful. More later. Glad to May! Don't worry, Don. Fester helped me find my truck. Yeah, he couldn't see it because of all them there trees. Hey, uh, Fester? Yeah? Uh, there ain't nobody in here. I have eyes, Elmer. By the way, much obliged to you giving Grandma a ride in your truck. Oh, that's no problem. But well, how long do you think she'll be? I gotta get home and wrap Glenda May's present. She said just long enough to visit a friend. You know, she's been spending a lot of time here lately. Oh, well, my Grandma, she spends all her time in the garden. Is that where she done grows her vegetables? No, that's where we buried her at. <laughs> <laughs> so, Elmer. <laughs> I mean, Nick, no. 
Yes, sir. I went to the Tri County Truck Stop. One stop shopping for the whole family. And you got Glenda May's present? Yes, I did. I wanted to show it to you. Speaking of presents, I can finally retire this year axe to my collection. Well, why is that? Because my boss down at the hardware store let it slip. He's a getting me a new one for Christmas. He just come right out and told you? Yep, he says to me, Fester, he says, Dagnab it this Christmas, I'm a giving you the axe. <laughs> that man, he's the salt of the earth. Numero onion. Well, sure enough. Now don't tell nobody I'm a getting one, because I want to surprise him. Oh, no, 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 my lips are sore. <laughs> so what'd you get her? Oh, here, I wanted to show it So much stuff in here. here. <laughs> what? Oh, those prunes? Those are for Grandma. She says it's her girdle. I think it's something else. That'll straighten her out to get her on the moon. Yeah. Oh, here you go. All right. Uh, Elmer? Yeah? I think you done grabbed the wrong box. Why? This one here is a full of spark plugs. Oh, that's right. But I thought this was Glenda May's. Uh, present? You think she'll like it? Elmer Crick, you mean to tell me you got your soon-to-be wife a box full of spark plugs for Christmas? <laughs> You're surprised, ain't you? I can tell by that look on your face. Well, you see, them spark plugs is a clue. Elmer, when it comes to women, you ain't got a clue. <laughs> <laughs> well, since when are you such a dog fired expert on women? I'll have you know, I go out with a different gal every week. Oh, wait, really? Yes, sir. As a matter of fact, my last date was with the Gruber twins. I had Marlene Gruber on this arm and Charlene Gruber on that arm. Wow. Did you have fun? Well, yes and no. Now, <laughs> quit changing the subject and tell me why this spark plugs is a clue. Oh, all right. Well, you see, you know that old Chevy truck I got? The one I was under when I popped the question to Glenda May? Was that the one that you put your sneakers in the gas tank because you wanted it to go faster? You ain't supposed to know about that. But anyway, wasn't that the one that you filled up full of dirt and pushed it, to the, pushed it into the swimming pool because you wanted a mud truck? <laughs> Mister, I got some feelings you've inspired on me. <laughs> wasn't that the truck that you filled up full of shoes and socks because you wanted to make a tow truck? It almost worked. <laughs> you got me there. <laughs> and wasn't that the truck that you was driving and you got abducted by aliens who wanted to experiment on your brain, but they brought you back early because they couldn't have found one? <laughs> they was wrong. They were looking in the wrong place. <laughs> that has nothing to do with the proof now, does it? <laughs> you know? And wasn't that the truck you were driving when you shot the sheriff, but he didn't shoot the deputy? <laughs> Easy on me. <laughs> All right, I'm done. Okay. <laughs> you see, I'm fixing up that truck to give it to her, and them spark plugs go in that truck. You see, it's a clue, ain't that romantic? Elmer, I think it's time that somebody with a lot of experience with women teaches you about the ways of love. Oh, okay. Well, is it somebody I know? It's me. I'm going to teach you. I swear, Elmer, you're slower than corrosion. <laughs> well, what do I do first, then? All right, take back these here spark plugs. All right. And, and you and the brooms? Save that as a last resort. <laughs> and get her something that comes on a string. On a string. That she can wear around her neck. Oh. Wear around her neck? Oh. That sparkles. Oh, the sparkles. You know what I'm talking about? Well, yeah, Pastor, you ain't dealing with something dumb hillbilly. Well, right, we'll go get her, Tiger. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Mr. X, Mr. X that uh, Glenda May's a pretty lucky gal. I'm almost not a bad fella at all. No, sir? Not a bad Mister, come quick, I can't find the truck. You know, Mr. Axe, first thing we gotta do is either get that boy some smarts or paint his truck a fire engine red. <laughs>
Well, I get busy on that as soon as I get done stringing the popcorn for the Christmas tree. It sure is nice of you and your family to help celebrate Christmas with us this year. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> it was Grandma's idea. You know, she really took a liking to Miss Sadie and the idea of getting her out of here. Mm-hmm. where'd you run off to? In here, Artemis. You're just in time to help us decorate for the Christmas party tomorrow. How can I do anything when I can't raise my arms no higher than this? <sighs> well, hello, everyone. <laughs> I to hold it down until after she had her pain pill. <coughs> oh, sorry. Well, now that it mention it, it is time for your six o'clock. If I die, I will never speak to you as long as I live. No, oh, one could only hope. <laughs> here's your pill and here's some water. It didn't work. You ain't giving it time. It's freezing in here. Can't somebody build a fire? I want all the missiles to have took down. I ain't in the mood for smooching. Where's our supper? I'm a starving. I, I think that's the most beautiful Christmas tree I ever saw. Ain't it nice and cozy in here? Where's the missiles at? We're off some sugar. Miss Ida you're Walker. That old thing? Who needs it? But, I, oh, wait a minute. Are you telling me her pain is completely gone and she can walk around without a walker all in a matter of five seconds just from taking one pill? Mm. Oh, yes. It's my miracle pill. <laughs> Nurse Peach, what did you give her just now? Oh, it's just something our doctor came up with. You mean it's not on the market? Look, mm -hmm. I can dance. Oswald, can I have a word with you, please? Outside. You sure are feeling chipper now, Miss Ida May. Oh, Mr. Taylor, I'm as happy as a tick on a fat dog. I guess I'll just decorate all by my lonesome. I'm sorry, Miss Peach, but she won't let me go. Oh, that's all right. Enjoy it while it lasts. Enjoy it while it lasts. Enjoy it while it lasts. Dance the halls with Bath and Polly and enjoy it while it lasts. Doc, doc. Come on in, Harley. Dance the halls with Bath and Polly and come on in. Come on in. All right, Mary Poppins. Let's harness that energy, get them angels, and hang them yonder. I'd be tickled too. Oh, the ink brought her in yet? Oh, I'm the G. Taylor's walking her down now. You just make yourself at home. Everything is sure looking Christmassy. Wow, I do declare a whole bouquet of flowers in the dead of winter. Yeah, for my little angel. Oh, you didn't have to do that for me. Haha, <laughs> I'm just kidding. You didn't think it could be funny, did you? <laughs> it's just that you usually bring her a single flower. Today's a special day. It's our 50th wedding anniversary. Well, if that don't just deal my pickle, why in Sam Hill didn't you let us know? We would have begged to pay for something. Y'all got enough to do around here, what with it being Christmas and everything? I'll bet you'd be glad to get Miss Sadie out of here and into the hands of a nurse that's got a little bit more sense about her. If y'all will excuse me, I think I'll go lay down for a bit. I thought you was feeling better, Miss Ida May. Maybe I'm sleepy. You got a problem with that? No, ma'am. <laughs> but when you're done with your nap, come on back and we'll dance some more. Why would I dance with someone who's got two left feet? Mm. She sure changed her tune real quick. She gets that way every time we talk about Miss Sadie leaving. Them two is real close. It's just between you and me, Miss Peach. I hope it never happens. You hope what never happens? My Sadie leaving here. I hope it don't happen. What? You don't want? I just don't think getting Sadie out of here is such a good idea. That's but I... all. I know Imogene Taylor means well, but I just as soon see my Sadie stay right here where she is. Oh. By the way, congratulations on 50 years. That's a long time to be together. We met at a school dance when we was both youngins. And you've been together ever since? She was the prettiest girl at school. And I was so shy. But I finally got up my nerve to court her. We was married, built our house, 
raised our boy. When he passed away, we loved each other through it. <coughs> we always planted gardens, took walks, picking blackberries. Sometime back before she was diagnosed, the special song we loved would come on the radio. We would stop what we was doing and dance to it. Oh. Ain't that silly? Yeah. <laughs> the other day, the song came on the radio. We stopped. She would be doing, but she, she, she didn't know what was going on. She didn't even recognize the song anymore. And that hurt. Oh. I'm sorry. <laughs> it, it, it's terrible. No, I know it's hard. <laughs> Look at who's here. Look who's here to see you, Sadie. There she is. Howdy. Come on over here and have a seat. And you can rock your baby. Do I know you? Well, he comes to see you every day. These are for you. Happy anniversary, sweetheart. Well, ain't them pretty. Here you go. These are for you. Oh, no. Mine. These are for you. These are for your from your husband. Well, where is everybody? Who are you looking for, Miss Sadie? <coughs> Shouldn't they all be here by now? Well, maybe they'll be getting here in just a little bit. Sadie, did you get a good look at your flowers? There's some roses and some daisies. See all the pretty colors. I can't figure out what's taking everybody so long. It's all right, sweetheart. Everything is all right. Mama Jean, why don't you help me put these in some water? I'll be glad to. Now you just get you some rest and we'll be back in a chip. And I'll help you. <laughs> <laughs> Can you believe it's been 50 years since you walked down the aisle of that little country church? There's so much to get done. Do you remember that first dance we had with each other? I would give anything if you could remember. If that boy don't get himself in here, I'll get a switch after him. Every boy at that school wanted to dance with you. This ain't my baby. What happened to my baby? Sadie? Who are you? Sadie, don't you know me? You were not supposed to be here. Somebody took me to my mama's house. Where's that man? I'm right here, honey. I ain't gonna let nothing in this world hurt you. Don't cry. Everything is gonna be all right. I don't know where my baby is. It's all right. I'm right here. Do you remember the times our little boy would cry and cry and wouldn't go to sleep? You take him up in your lap and you'd rock him. And just as he started to calm down, you'd sing him a lullaby. Do you remember that? When are you coming home, Mama? I'm waiting for you. I'm waiting. Shh. It's all right. I'm right here. Hush, little baby, don't say a word. Papa's gonna buy you a mockingbird. And if that mockingbird don't sing, Papa's gonna buy you a diamond ring. <laughs> Oh, no, no, they. How old is that kid? 
Oh, honey, you ain't getting old. <laughs> That's what you think. You know when you're getting old and everything either dries up or leaks. <laughs> On top of that, I think my appendages are about to bust. Would somebody please uh, shut me, up? Me, me, Oh, I oh, may. I figured you'd be in a much better mood what with the Christmas party coming and all. This is as nice as I get when my appendages are on the verge of exploding. Oh, you had your appendix out 30 years ago. They grew back. <laughs> it ain't funny! I get so sick and tired of them sticking tubes in me, taking blood out of me, want me to fill the cups. Way too much information! <laughs> I filled up so many cups, I feel like it's set a fountain in a drugstore. Will you look comfortable now? I'm fine as long as I'm in my rocker. Of course, sitting too long causes my Polaroids to act up. <laughs> well, I just hung the just, last ornament. Just do something nice for yourself, Ida May. When I get down in the dumps, I go out and buy myself a new dress. So that's where you got it. And you should know by now I'm doing the devotions tonight? Oh, no, I didn't know. Oh. Well, let me give you my autograph. Oh. Okay, I guess. Thank you. You're welcome. And y'all have a good time. <coughs> guess what it's time for, Audrey? You're enough about time. Oh, 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 let me give it to her. Let me give it to her. I want to help the poor crabby old lady out. I mean, right about my journal. So, um, how about ten? Uh, no, we don't want to be pulling her off the rafters tonight. Oh, good idea. Five. No, no, you don't have to deal with her. I do. Just one. Can we say two and call it even? Oh, fine. Okay. I wait. Here you go. It didn't work. You ain't giving it time, Ida May. Five, four, three, two, one. Merry Christmas, everyone! Here you go, sweet face, sit on it. Emma Jean, you're looking so skinny these days. I'm in the Christmas spirit. Good old King, what's his name? Look it out, I'll feed some Stephen. All right, all right, we'll wait and sing at the Christmas party tomorrow night, Ida Mae. Oswald, I'm telling you, it's some kind of miracle drug. Well, maybe we should report it to the United States Food and Drug Administration. What? And, and give up on all this money you can bring us? And when I say us, I mean me? <laughs> well, I guess a lot of people could benefit from yeah, it. Yeah, and you're looking at the main one. I'm going to have to figure out what the ingredients are. <clears throat> Cousin Oswald, would you like to come over here for a minute and shoot the breeze with me? What? Oh, oh. Uh -huh. Ain't old country Christmas traditions wonderful cousin Oswald? Oh look, mistletoe. Oh. Oh mistletoe. Cousin Oswald, you taste just like a Granny Smith apple. <laughs> Get the preacher! Get the preacher! I just been done kissed by a single fella under the mistletoe! Cousin Oswald, congratulations, you old rooster! You for what? <laughs> Everybody knows that when a single fella, that's you, kisses a single girl, that's Glinda <coughs> Mack wearing hand-me-downs and used sneakers, he has to marry up with her. It's the code of the hills. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You can't trick somebody into marrying you. It isn't ethical. It may not be ethical, but it's the code. <laughs> Grandma Taylor, tell her this is preposterous. Oh, I can't tell her that. Well, why not? Well, I can't pronounce it. <laughs> well, when we're married, everything that is his is mine, and everything that is mine is his. 
And that ain't gonna be a bit fair to him, child. Them fields of yours are so full of oil, well, they won't never be able to have a decent crop sold in them. <laughs> Wait a minute, brother of mine. Let's, uh, let's think this through. After all, it's not like you have anyone waiting for you back at the house. Getting married and settling down may be just what you need. Uh -huh. <laughs> oil. As in oil they pump out of the ground and give you lots of money for, huh? Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, what are you doing? You trying to speak? For a walk. I've got some serious thinking to do. Uh, Come on, let's go talk to him before he has too much time to think about it. Uh, Brenda May? Yes, Grandma? Now, there ain't no such thing as some coat of the hills, and la, you know la, that. La, 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 la. I can't <laughs> hear you, Grandma. I'm too busy planning our double ceremony. Maybe <laughs> we can get Piggly Wiggly to care the wedding. <gasps> and you know what? To save money, we can gather up all the rice at the wedding and serve it at the reception. <laughs> Yay! more silly girls than them. They're excited, that's for sure. <coughs> oh no, I'd make oh, call the nurse. Are you hurt somewhere? I think I just bought my new girdle. <laughs> Something on a string? Right. That she can wear around her neck? Right. That sparkles? Right. Atta boy, Elmer. I'm well, much obliged to you, Fester, but you know, I can't for the life of me figure out why Glenda made Royal so Creek. Where in Sand Hill have you been? Uh, you were supposed to make us up for the Christmas party. Oh my God. We had to walk here in the snow up hill. Yeah, and I'm numb from my toes down. Uh, he's real sorry, Glenda May. Uh, I'm real sorry, Glenda May. Have you been off kissing on some pretty girl? Oh no, I don't want to kiss on any pretty girls, Glenda May. I only want to kiss on you. <laughs> he's always a thinking of you. A love song come on the radio this morning, and you come straight to his mind. Which one? Well, you know, the one that goes, her teeth were stained, but her heart was pure. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You can't all be a hippopotamus for Christmas, eh? <laughs> anyway, uh, he's, uh, he's always thinking of you. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, when he fought that fat old hog of his, you pop straight into his head. Elmer Crick, you're on probation. Do you hear me? Yes, dear. Yes, dear. Whatever you say. Oh, whatever you say. I love you. Oh, I love you oh, too, Betty. No, 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 no. You love her. Oh, I love you, Glenda May. Come over here and take my rap. Okay. Oh, my gosh. Elmer, you're so dumb. Huh? Then if you walked ten steps backwards, you would get lost. <laughs> yeah. It's a news. No, I haven't. Cause an Oswald and I are getting hitched. To what? For each other. And how'd you trick him? I didn't trick him. Well, why would somebody so certified want? You. <gasps> because I'm a catch, that's why. Yeah, like a large mouth bass. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's not everybody just stand around here. I told Nurse Peach that we would we would hand out the plates and cups. So let's get to it. <laughs> 
I got it, I got it. Let me see, are you sure this Take is it? Hi, oh, uh, sweet thing. I had slipped the bottle from Nurse Peach when she wasn't looking. I'm gonna take one and try it out on my tennis so and see how it works. Well, hurry, before somebody sees you. All right, here goes nothing. How do you feel? Hold on, hold on. Uh, five, four, three, two, one. Well? It's gone. The pain is gone completely. You're kidding. Would I kid about something that's gonna make us this much money? Uh, come to here. Uh, we're in the money. We're what are you guys so excited about? <laughs> My dreams are coming true. That's right. <laughs>
What did he say? He said he used to know you. Sadie, every step I took since the moment I could walk, 
What's the step towards finding her? Sadie, today's your anniversary. What? It's your wedding anniversary. You've been married for 50 years. Happy anniversary, Harley and Sadie. I'm afraid we're not having a good day. What are all these people doing here? Are you going to take me home? Honey, you are at home. I need to warm the bottle up for the baby. Sadie, look around. You're surrounded by your family. We all love you. Why are y'all trying to keep me here? I got so much I need to be doing. Oh, and Sadie, why don't you come over here and have a seat by me? No, I'm taking my baby home. Honey, why don't you stay here just a little while longer? I don't know who my baby's been uh, uh, crying. Miss Sadie. It's all right. Miss Sadie, how about we take a walk? She's just a little confused. We'll be back later. I'll come with you. It breaks my heart to see her going downhill this way. Yeah, I ain't never seen her this confused. What a terrible disease. It seems so unfair. Well, once she has a little walk, they'll be able to bring her back in. Harley, are you all right, hon? She don't know who I am. She's just having a bad day. It won't always be like this. It'll only get worse. I know she will never be the same. You want a cookie? Fifty years of memories. She doesn't even remember who I am. It's like saying a long goodbye to somebody you love so much. What kind of are you? Are you going to open my present now? Woo! <laughs> okay, Elvin. Elmer. Elmer. But if I don't like it, you're going to be in real hot water. Not again. I was in hot water last night. Why? I took a bath. <laughs> Ooh, let me give you a hint of what your present is. No, Fester, don't. It's something shiny on a string that you can wear around your neck. Oh, you don't mean. Christmas lights? <laughs> well, do you like them? It's hard to tell by the expression on your face. What in Sam Hill? Elmer, what kind of a necklace is this? Necklace? This better be some kind of joke. Fester, you never said nothing about no necklace. This is the worst present I've ever gotten. I wanted spark plugs. Spark plugs? <laughs> Fester, Taylor, I got a good mind to pound you. If you didn't have that act. <laughs> Cousin Petunia. Yes. How on earth am I going to be able to get Cousin Hallswell to love me unconstitutionally? <laughs> unconstitutionally? Yeah. No matter what. Oh, you mean unconditionally. Well, we'll figure it out. Testing one, two. Testing one, two. Can everybody hear me out there? Yeah. Can you hear me back there in the rocking chairs? We're only 10 feet away from you. You don't need a microphone. Testing one, two. Testing one, two. Oh, look. It's the ingredients of the miracle bill. But where did you get that? I, uh, sweet talk to you, Nurse Peach. Wait, you sweet talk to oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, hey, Nurse Peach. How about you let me see the ingredients in a fake bill, huh? And she was all like, well, I don't know. And I was all like, yeah, come on, sweetheart, I won't tell. And she was like, well, okay, you handsome thing, you. <laughs> Pete? What? That didn't happen. I know. Listen, turn it around. Be the loud and pride and sycamore leaves. This sounds like some sort of witch's brew. Elmer, I hid it for weeks. I wanted spark plugs for that Chevy van you've been working on. Uh, but, but, but honeysuckle! Don't honeysuckle me. <laughs> We're done. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Friend of Meg. Look what you got me. I know. And you want as far as one. Absolutely. I told you he was dumb. At least it matches your dress. <laughs> now, I'm done with him. Through. Bye-bye. 
After a while, alligator. Oh. Hey, hey. Glad to be out there. How's she doing, Miss Peach? She's resting back in her room. I'll go sit with her. Is everything all right, Miss Peach? Mm -hmm. No, she's just a little confused with it being Christmas Eve and a routine being off. But I think we should go ahead and get the party started, and she'll be back in a little bit. Consider it done, Miss Page. Could I have everybody's attention? I have a few announcements Miss Peach wanted me to share before I get started with my devotions. I'm going to take his present back. Get a refund. Keep the money. Yeah, that'll show them. Yeah. The peacemaking meeting scheduled for next week has been canceled due to a conflict. <laughs> Preacher Hobbs will be bringing two sermons on Sunday. The morning sermon is Jesus Walks Across Water. The night sermon is a searching for Jesus. <laughs> I need my pen pill. I don't know how to tell you this, Adam May, but I can't give you your pill tonight. What? Bertha Belk, a missionary from Africa, will speak Tuesday night at 7 o'clock. Come and hear Bertha Belch all the way from Africa. <laughs> One boat left and it disappeared. Oswald, this was our last bottle. We gotta get that back to her. But she'll know you took them. <laughs> Weight Watchers will meet tomorrow night in the Annex building. Please use the large double doors at the side <laughs> entrance. <laughs> She's a pretty girl. You're a pretty girl. Tell her she's got nice eyes. You've got nice eyes. Tell her you want to marry her. You've got nice eyes. Oh, oh. Friends of May. I'll marry you. I'll marry you. Everybody just hush up. We need to just everybody quieten down so we can let boring Elkin get on with his devotions and then we can eat. Yeah. 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 Well, why don't you come and sit by me? Oh, I was going to sit over here. Right now. <laughs> I'm reading from Romans chapter 5 verse 8. It says right here, but God demonstrates his love for us in this. Well, we were still sinners. Christ died for us. I don't see nothing there where the good Lord tells us. Now, people down there on earth, as soon as you clean up your act, I'll send my boy to die for you. I don't see nary a word there that says, if I promise to love you, I'll send my young gun down there, and you can be forgave for your son. Sins, excuse me. <laughs> we, we didn't have to get all cleaned up before we could experience his love because while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. I think the good Lord wants us to follow his example and practice that kind of unconditional love well, we're here on earth. And that seems to be getting harder and harder to find these days. Can anybody share an example of what that love is here in Cricket County? Here we go, right in here. This is what a Christmas party is. There we go. I I'm sorry, we didn't mean to interrupt. There's an example right there. Sadie said she's ready to come back in here where everybody else is. We got your feeling better. Well, I guess that's all I got to say about that. I hope everybody has a Merry Christmas and remember, 
that the baby in the manger is the best example of what unconditional love really is. Thank you, Elkin. I think that gives us all something to think about. Fester, Elmer, would you please help pass out the presents? Uh, before we do that, I'd like to tell everybody how much we appreciate everything y'all have done for my wife. She is surrounded by people who truly love and care for her. I don't think the good Lord could have found a better place on this earth to have put my Sadie in. She's comfortable here, and I know she feels loved, loved unconditional. I just wanted to say that. And Harley, all this time, all I could think about was getting her out of here. I was being selfish, not thinking about what would be the best thing for her. I sure am sorry about that. There ain't no need to feel sorry for nothing, Imogene. I know it was only coming from the kindness of your heart. So does this mean she won't be moving out? Nope, sure don't seem that way. That sure does make my back feel better. <coughs> Harley? What? It's me, Sadie. Sadie, you know me? You're talking to me? Yes, but only for a minute. Just long enough to tell you a few things I would tell you if I could. Mm -hmm. It's a miracle. Now, listen carefully because I don't have long. I want to thank you for taking such good care of me all these years. I've enjoyed every minute of our life together. Can't I keep you like this, Sadie? I'd do anything. We can't change our circumstances. We can only love each other through it. I do love you so much. I know you do, and I love you too. This is what I've been praying for. I want to talk to you like this all the time. I'll still be here. It will still be me. It's important that you understand that deep inside my soul, I know who you are and I know how much we love each other. I may not be able to express it and may not remember, but I'll know. And that's what's important. So keep coming every day, keep bringing the flowers, and keep loving me. I'm counting on you. Don't leave me, Sadie. Sadie. Mr. Harley, are you all right? Sadie! Uh. Elmer Craig. Uh oh. <laughs> the kind of love that Elkin was talking about is the kind of love I've been looking for my whole life. Pure love that just keeps going on and on no matter what. Me too, Glenda May. Let me finish. <laughs> <laughs> I've been telling you that I'd marry up with you if you would do this or you would do that. And well, that's just not right at all. I love you for you. And that's what matters the most. I love you too, Glenda May. Aww. Aww. Nurse Peach? Here you go. Oh, I did declare. Where did you find them? I, uh, well, I took them when you weren't looking. <gasps> I was planning on patenting the ingredients so I could sell it all and make a lot of money, but, uh... <laughs> well, you must have a lot of love in your heart to want to help people that way. I wish I could say it was my love for my fellow human beings that motivated my actions, but, uh... Oh, don't fret about it. Watch this. Out of May! Merry Christmas! What's this? Well, I talked to the doctor, and he said you could have one any time. You feel a pain coming on. You mean any time I want? Any time you want. Glory be! It's a miracle! I think I'll have one now! But, uh, Nurse Peach, you can't give her medicine to take whenever she wants. Yeah, won't that be dangerous? What? Coca-Cola Tic Tacs? They ain't dangerous at all! <laughs> yeah, but... Coca-Cola Tic Tacs. <laughs> but that can't be. I took one from my shoulder and the, and the pain was gone just like that. Mm. You, you mean it was all up here? You heard of placebo, right? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> hey, well, what about this list yeah. of ingredients? Oh my goodness. This is a recipe for my owl beak soup. Owl soup? Mmm. Wonder if it's good. 
No, it's more like a witch's broom. <laughs> I guess this means you're off the hook. Brenda May, can I say something to you? Sure. For a while there, I was I was ready to give an emphatic, let's do it, but my adoration would have been artificial, thus unfair to the dignity of your humanity. You deserve to be loved. Loved without condition.
what an evening. One of the things I was thankful for the cast this year is they gave us the gift of laughter. You know, the gift of laughter is from our Lord. And I love the way He gives us an opportunity to laugh and just kind of forget about what's going on around us. And so just remember, it's always good to laugh because it's a gift from our Lord and Savior. But something else is also a gift, His unconditional love. You heard that tonight. You know, the Bible teaches us this. This is love. Not that we love God first, but He first loved us and gave His only begotten Son as a sacrifice for our sins. That's the purpose of the manger. That's the purpose of the virgin birth. That God became flesh and He dwelt among us. And when we see Jesus, we behold the glory of God the Father Himself. And He lived a perfect life and then went and sacrificed His life. Not that we deserved it. He did it because God is love. And so we'd like to close tonight by reminding you that if you do not have a personal relationship with the Lord, you may be a good person, a moral person, maybe you're even a religious person, but you have not yet come into a relationship with the living God. All you need to do is, first of all, admit that no matter how good you are, it's not enough. Being good will never get you to heaven. It is your faith in Jesus Christ. Believe that He's the only way to be forgiven of your sin. He's the only way to heaven. And then commit your life to Him. Say, Lord, I am a sinner. Please forgive me of my sin. Thank You for Your selfless, sacrificial act on the cross. And come and live inside of me, and I will become Your follower. You do that, and you will truly experience His unconditional love. Father, we pray right now, and we just thank You for the gift of laughter, and we thank You for the gift of your unconditional love. We did not deserve it, yet you came anyway and you died that we might be forgiven of our sins. And Lord, we thank you for that precious, precious gift. And Lord, we thank you as we celebrate your birth this year, no matter what is going on, again, that you are with us and you're coming for us very, very soon. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Pastor Paul has got a few things for us. All right, we're going to turn you loose here in just a minute because it's 9 o'clock and in Inverness that's like midnight. Anyway. So, okay. Very quickly, Miss Kiki Carlson has a, a presentation here. Okay. On behalf of the Cricket County cast, we would like to thank our director, Mike Nappy. for months trying to get this down. And maybe by next year we'll have it. <laughs> Two more months we would have had it. Yep. I wanted to say it's not my circus and not my monkeys, but you guys are my monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for your efforts. But they clearly have been working on this for months. And uh, and um, I just want to thank them all. And next year, come, come see the show, it'll be a smaller cast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Mike. Take an opportunity, Brenda. Come on up here, Brenda Reed. I need you to come down. <laughs> Brenda Reed has been really the heart and soul behind this Christmas dinner theater for the last 16 years. So she's done through the years. Of course, she organizes it every year, but other than that, through the years, she's directed it. Besides putting on all of everything else, the organization, she's a starred in it before. Yes. She's been part of the cast several times. And so anything that has passed over 16 years, Brenda's been involved in. And we just want to say a special thank you, Brenda, for all your faithfulness. Even though it wasn't for any of us, it was to the Lord. And the Lord, I believe, is well pleased. And we just want to honor you. Uh, here's a card for you and Brother Lee, a little uh, gift card in there for you. Don't let Lee try to spend it. And, uh, yeah, we know he will. And uh, then that's for you. We want to just love you and thank you so much. Let's give Brenda a big hand. And most of all, yes, thank you so much. And most of all, let's give our Heavenly Father a big hand for the greatest gift to all humanity, His Son, Jesus. God bless you. Have a great night. Have a wonderful Merry Christmas. And we'll see you somewhere at Calvary. God bless.